Shalom. Today we are returning to the Hebrew alphabet, letter by letter, where we study two letters at a time. Remember to get your font chart and print it out. You will find it very helpful. The first letter we're going to do today is the Tzadi. If you look on your chart, it's the sixth from the end under the number value 90. Tzadi has a final form, so the one that you're looking at will be the one on the right. The tzadi makes a tz, tz, ts sound. It's not tz, you want to make it a one sound. In English we say pizza, pizza, so you can think about it. You won't have any trouble making this sound in the middle of the word, but sometimes it's a little bit difficult at the front of the word. Just think about the syllable p and then say the rest of the food, tz. The picture meaning for the tzadi is the fish hook. We're also going to look at the lamid which is the 13th figure. It's under the number value 50. This is the only letter which will go up above the line in the block print. And the meaning, the picture meaning, is an ox code. When I first thought about an ox code being quite ignorant of the matter, I imagined that it was some, like a, a crop that you would use to maybe spur a horse on. However, an ox code is a great big stick with a metal pointer, pricker thing at the end of it. And here you see a medieval rendition of how to use one. This is obviously not drawn to scale since the oxen are only the size of maybe Great Danes. You want to be as far away from the ox as possible when you urge it along by pricking it between his shoulders. These two letters together spell a word which is tsel, which means shadow or protection. In Genesis 19.8, Behold now, says Lot, I have two daughters which have not known man. Let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you, and do ye to them as is good in your eyes. Only unto these men do nothing, for therefore came they under the shadow of my roof. So physically there's a shadow inside the roof, it's, it's shaded, but also it has this idea of protection. In Second Kings 20.10, we're talking about a literal shadow that the sun would cast. And Hezekiah answered, It is a light thing for the shadow to go down ten degrees. Nay, but let the shadow return backwards ten degrees. If you can imagine a sundial going backwards. Popular psalm these days, Psalm 91, 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Yes, there's a shadow and there's a protection. Psalm 121.5 Yehovah is thy keeper. Yehovah is thy shade upon thy right hand. Shade protects you from the heat of the desert. There are two people who have this syllable in their names. The first is Betzal El, the designer and builder of the Mishkan, of the tabernacle. Exodus 35.30 And Moses said unto the children of Israel, See, Yehovah hath called by name Betzal El, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. So the bet here, the beginning of the word, means in. Tzal is the shadow, and El is God. This man is working in the shadow of God. We know that there's a tabernacle in heaven, and he is making that manifest on earth. Another person is Tzila, in Genesis 4, 19. And Lamech took unto him two wives, the name of the one was Ada, and the name of the other was Tzila. So this is kind of interesting. He's the first guy to have two wives, and I'm sure it didn't work out well. The first one, Ada, her name means like an ornament. She's like the trophy wife. And Tzila, she's like the shadow wife who's always walking maybe two or three paces behind him. When this syllable is reduplicated, we see it twice. Siltzel or Tzaltzel, it's pronounced different ways, and we find two different meanings. In Psalm 150, verse 5, praise him upon the loud cymbals, praise him upon the high-sounding cymbals. So what is the relationship between the shadow and the cymbals? When you have a shadow, it's like an image of the thing itself. It's a repetition of the thing itself. If you stand with the sun behind you, you will see your shadow. Your shadow is in the shape of you. With symbols, we're talking about something that relates to sound. 
like the sound of itself keeps repeating and repeating and repeating on itself. Another translation, Deuteronomy 28.42, All thy trees and fruit of thy land shall the locust consume. And it is believed that this is also related to the sound, similar to the symbols, where the sound just keeps repeating and repeating and repeating. Talal in 1 Samuel 3.11, And Yehovah said to Samuel, Behold, I will do a thing in Israel, at which both the ears of every one that heareth it shall tingle. Tingling is a physical sensation, but it's like something that keeps coming back on itself. It keeps repeating itself. Here's an interesting cognate, but sal, Numbers 11.5. We remember the fish which we did eat in Egypt, the cucumbers and the melons and the leeks and the onions and the garlic. Think about how an onion is shaped. Each layer of it is like a repetition of the previous layer. It's like a shadow of itself. Another cognate we find is tzala, which means side or rib. And it also means to falter, in other words, to limp or not to be able to walk normally. So we find this verse in Genesis 2, 21. And Yehovah caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs, a tzala, and closed up the flesh instead thereof. If you think about your ribs, each bone is kind of like a repetition, a little shadow of the next one. It doesn't mean so much the bone, but it also means like the side. Where is that bone? It's in the side of the man. Exodus 25:14. And thou shalt put the staves into the rings by the sides of the ark, that the ark may be born with them. As a verb, we have this idea of faltering or halting. Not halting in the sense of stopping, but maybe in the sense of limping. Genesis 32, 31. And as he passed over Penuel, the sun rose upon him, and he halted upon his thigh. Remember, Jacob was wrestling with the angel. He couldn't walk properly afterwards. How is this related to the side? Well, maybe somebody who limps is going to favor one side. Maybe they might even appear with a bit of a curved shape in their body, favoring one side, leaning to one side. In Jeremiah 20.10, For I heard the defaming of many, fear on every side. Report, say they, and we will report it. All my familiars watched for my halting, saying, Peradventure he will be enticed, and we shall prevail against him, and we shall take our revenge on him. His enemies are waiting for him to fall. Now in Micah 4, 6, and 7, we see again, in that day, saith Jehovah, will I assemble her that halteth, and I will gather her that is driven out, and her that I have afflicted, and I will make her that halted a remnant, and her that was cast far off a strong nation, and Jehovah shall reign over them in Mount Zion from henceforth even forever. We know in the end times, the remnant comes back halting, lame. In Zephaniah 3.19, Behold, at that time I will do all that afflict thee, and I will save her that halteth, and gather her that was driven out, and I will get them praise and fame in every land where they have been put to shame, in all places whither I shall drive them. So in the beginning we see that the first woman, the bride, came from this tzelah, and on the end the remnant comes tzelah, limping, Behold, it is the bride coming home. In the Birch Hadashah, in Colossians 2, 16 and 17, it talks about a shadow. Let no man therefore judge you in meat, or in drink, or in respect of any holy day, or of the new moon, or of the Sabbath days, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Messiah. The shadow cannot be doing something that the body is not doing. If the body has gone bowling, the shadow cannot be playing soccer. We cannot see. We can see the shadow. We can see by the shadow what the body is. If the body is eating lamb sacrificed on Passover, the shadow cannot be eating ham sacrificed at Easter. Get it? Another place where we see the shadow talked about is in the occult. The word occult actually comes from astronomy when one heavenly body is completely occulted, it's completely hidden behind another heavenly body. 
I think this picture shows maybe Mars being occulted by the moon. Remember, Mars is much further away, even though it's bigger, it's further away, it appears smaller, and it can disappear into the shadow of the moon. The practice of the occult is based on things which are hidden, which cannot be seen. The shadow of the object, which is covering up the hidden object, is so large that we cannot even see what is hidden. In biblical teaching, the sun will shine a light on an object and we can see its shadow. In Matthew 10, 27, it is written, What I tell you in darkness, that speak ye in the light, and what ye hear in the ear, that preach ye upon the housetops. There is no thing which is hidden, which is occulted in true biblical teaching. Here is the memory verse, Psalm 17, 8. Listen. Shamreni ki ishon bat ayin, betzel ki nafecha tastireni. Again slowly. Shamreni, from shamar to guard. Guard me ki ishon, ishon. This is like the small man. Bat is daughter, ayin is I the small man who is in your eye. This is a lovely metaphor. We would translate it as the apple of your eye. If you are close enough to somebody and you look in their eyes, you will see your little man reflection in their eye. And this is how we talk to Jehovah. Guard me as the little man that's in your eye. You're looking at me my reflection is in your eye. Guard me as the apple of your eye. Betzel, betzel, in the shadow. Kinafecha, kanaf, kanaf is wing, in your, of your wings. Betzel, kinafecha, in the shadow of your wings. Tastireni, hide me, you will hide me. Listen again. Shamreni, ki ishon bat ayin. So you have two more letters under your belt, Sadi and Lamed. Until next time, Tasimit Ha'inayim Al Hashemayim, keep your eye on the sky, your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom.